Hello everyone. So today we have a really neat and interesting problem and we are going to use one of the most common inequalities in mathematics which is the AMGM AGM inequality. So we are going to study a little bit about it. We are going to learn it's one of its most classic applications that was used in a problem in an Olympiad. So yeah, this is the problem number three from the RMO, the Regional Math Olympiad in 2019. And in this video, we are obviously going to learn how to prove inequalities. We are going to learn about AMGM inequality, its interpretation and its applications. Then we have some book suggestions for the RMO and IQM. And at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. So let's begin. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So they have given us this uh, question to prove. Let A, B, and C be positive real numbers. And we'll actually see why this is important later on. Um, and they assert that A plus B plus C is equal to 1. So there's a slight restriction on the values that A, B, and C can take. And then we need to prove this given inequality. Okay, so before we kind of jump onto this problem, I want to discuss uh, the AMGM HM inequality. So there's this very fundamental inequality in maths, which is called AM greater than equal to GM greater than equal to HM. It essentially states that uh, the arithmetic mean of n quantities is greater than the geometric mean of n quantities, which is greater than the harmonic mean of n quantities. And what's the arithmetic mean? Arithmetic mean is nothing but the sum of all quantities divided by n, right? So am is nothing but sigma xi divided by n, right? And what's the geometric mean? The geometric mean is nothing but the nth root of the um, of the multiplication of all of these terms, right? So nth root of pi e of x, if you want to put it that way. And harmonic mean is nothing but n divided by 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2 plus 1 over x3 till 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 1 over xn. Okay. And we have this relation that am is going to equal to gm is going to equal to hm. So we can, I can just put it that way. Sigma xi divided by n is going to equal to the nth root of x1, x2, x3 all the way till n is going to equal to n divided by 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2 dot 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 1 over xn. Now, let's just consider the case for three numbers to just kind of illustrate this a little bit. For three numbers, and let the three numbers be x1, x2, x3. Now, if you take these three numbers, what will we get? So, we can get this inequality that x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 is going to go to the cube root of x1, x2, x3. And that is going to go to 3 divided by 1 by x1 plus 1 by x2 plus 1 by x3. Well, this is just kind of an example of how we would use this. Now, there are obviously a couple of things to note over here that this, this inequality that I just written is only applicable for positive numbers, right? This is only for positive numbers. It cannot be applied to negative numbers. And the second thing is that um, the equality case, the equality is basically AM is equal to GM is equal to HM happens when all of the terms are equal. So X1 is equal to X2 is equal to X3. And all of the terms are really equal to one another. And this is called the equality case. Now, um, there's actually a general version of this. So that is basically quadratic mean is greater than equal to the arithmetic mean, which is greater than equal to the geometric mean, which is greater than equal to the harmonic mean. What is the quadratic mean? So quadratic mean is also called RMS, root mean squared. It's nothing but the root of x1 squared plus x2 squared till xn squared divided by n. So root and the square of the mean in a way. So we have this expression and in general quadratic mean is greater than equal to arithmetic mean, greater than equal to geometric mean, greater than equal to harmonic mean. And obviously the main point to remember is this is only and only applicable for positive numbers. Okay, now let's come back to the problem that they've given to us. So they had given to us that a plus b plus c is equal to 1 and a divided by a squared plus b cube plus c cube plus b divided by b squared plus a cube plus c cube plus c divided by c squared plus a cube plus b cube is essentially less than or equal to 1 over 5 abc. Yeah, so this pretty neat symmetry involved in the problem as well. And we have this restriction that a plus b plus c is equal to 1. So let's see what we can do. Now I can write a over a square plus b cube plus c cube to be equal to 1 a divided by a square times a plus b plus c plus b cube plus c cube. And this a plus b plus c is 1. So it actually the left hand side, right hand side both are equal. This quantity is nothing but 1. 
right? So I just multiplied it by one, doesn't make any difference. Now this would be equal to a divided by a cube plus b cube plus c cube plus a square b plus a square c. And if I divide the numerator and denominator by a, I would get one over um, a squared plus b cube by a plus c cube by a plus a b plus a c. Okay, perfect. And if I just rewrite this in a slightly different form, and you'll actually see why I'm doing this in a moment. So I just rewrite this as this: one over one by a square plus one over um, a by b cube, right? Plus one over a by c cube plus one over one by a b plus one over one by a c. And if you if you can just look at both of these expressions, they're actually equal, right? Now, why did I do this? I did this to you know, kind of use the idea that the geometric mean is greater than equal to the harmonic mean, right? So this thing that what we have obtained over here is actually in a way something related to the harmonic mean. So we are kind of getting the intuition that we might have to use harmonic mean is less than equal to geometric mean over here. And indeed, that is the case. Now this expression, let me call that as k. So what we have received over here till k, if I just let this equal to k, then k is in fact less than or equal to 1 by 5 times the geometric mean of these quantities. That will be nothing but 1 by a square times uh, a by b cube times a by c cube times 1 by a b times 1 by a c raised to the power of 1 by 5. So the quantity k is actually less than or equal to 1 by 5 times 1 by a square b raised to the power 4 c raised to the power 4 raised to the power 1 by 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a raised to the power 5, b raised to the power 5, c raised to the power 5 common in the denominator, right? a raised to the power 5, b raised to the power 5, c raised to the power 5. What does that leave me with? That essentially leaves me with a cube b c in the numerator raised to the power 1 by 5. So I got the fact that k is less than or equal to 1 by 5 abc times a cube b c raised to the power 1 by 5, right? Now, and to just kind of reiterate, what was this k? k was that complicated expression that we have obtained above, okay? Okay, perfect. And that was essentially equal to, so k was essentially equal to a divided by a square plus b cube plus c square, c cube. Because we had essentially obtained uh, that expression from this original quantity. And so k is equal to that. And we have uh, also got this expression that k is less than or equal to this quantity over here. Now what can we do? Now we can actually notice that um, a plus a plus a plus b plus c divided by 5 is greater than or equal to the... Um, a times a times a times b times c raised to the power 1 by 5, which is nothing but a cube b c raised to the power 1 by 5, right? So therefore, therefore, k is essentially less than or equal to 1 by 5 a b c, and this becomes 3 a plus b plus c, a plus a plus a plus b plus c is 3 a b c, 3, 3 a plus b plus c divided by 5. So therefore, therefore, the sum of, if I do the sigma notation like I did above, a divided by a square plus b cube plus c cube, is less than or equal to 1 by 5 abc times um, 5a plus b plus c divided by 5. So we can essentially say that sigma a divided by a square plus b cube plus c cube is less than or equal to cancel. This gets cancelled. This is essentially 1. So that's 1 by 5abc. And uh, yeah, so that is essentially how you would uh, how, how you would solve this problem. And this is quite an interesting problem. It involves certain techniques that you may or may not spot in the exam. And obviously, this is one of the more elementary solutions using AMGM and HM. Uh, when I had given this exam, I had solved it using something called the Moorhead inequality. Moorhead inequality. Using the idea of homogenization and miniaturization. You can also use the Jensen's inequality, I believe, to solve this problem. But this was relatively one of the more um, elementary solutions to this. So I really hope you enjoy this and learned a lot from it. Okay, so after that, we have certain book suggestions. For the RMO, we have mathematical circles, challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics, excursion mathematics, mathematical Olympiad challenges with Tito and the rescue, mathematical gems, inequalities with problems, inequalities with Korovkin, and functional equations by Venkat Chala. Now after this, we have a really similar but challenging problem, and again, it's using just EMGM HM that should be sufficient to solve this problem, and it to essentially prove this inequality holds for positive real numbers. Again, this is actually very important because. If that was not written, then you could not have used AMGM HM. It's only applicable for positive numbers. So if you make any progress on this problem or if you're able to solve it, please let me know. And um, and I'll definitely respond to it. 
But until then, that's it from me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics, and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last ten years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympians from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information. Visit chinta.com.